Whenever I travel to an amusement park, I often have a strategy for tackling the rides throughout the park. Today, I'm going to be sharing my strategy for hitting all the coasters at my home park, Six Flags St. Louis. And also, I will be discussing what I think the best row for each of the coasters are. Before I get started, just know that this is my own personal opinion, and I know that this strategy for several of you could be different depending on if you value certain rides. I should note that this strategy will be based on if you get to the park when it opens for the day. Whenever I hear about what to hit first at this park, the coasters I hear being discussed are Pandemonium and Mr. Freeze. While I think that both of these are good options for coasters to hit first, my recommendation is that you should ride Scram and Eagle first. There are a couple reasons why I think you should hit this ride early. The first reason is because of the popularity of this ride. Despite being in the back of the park, Scream and Eagle is still quite popular from my experience. The next reason is because of the park's skip the line system. As of when I'm recording this, Scream and Eagle is the only coaster in the park that is not available on the Flash Pass or the membership skip the line system. This can lead to longer lines, and it often moves fairly slow, especially if they're running one train. The third reason is not something that I would say was an issue in the past, but rather this year. I've seen Scream and Eagle have more technical difficulties than any other coaster in the park, even more than something like Mr. Freeze. The final reason is because of Catwoman Whip. That was the park's new for 2022 attraction, and it is located right next to Scream and Eagle's entrance. I've seen a lot of people get to Catwoman first thing in the morning, notice the long line, and go to Scream and Eagle first thing instead. This could result in much longer waits earlier in the morning, depending on how crowded the park is throughout the rest of the day. It could also reach wait times of an hour or more throughout the rest of it. I remember opening night of Fright Fest in 2022, the app said that almost every coaster was a five minute wait the whole night. The only exception was Scream and Eagle, which is an hour wait. In terms of how many trains this coaster runs, it usually runs two trains, but I have seen them run one train even when the park is busy. If that's the case, hitting it early is crucial. As for where you should sit on this ride, I think that the back of the train is the best for airtime on this ride. More specifically, the second back row of the blue train. Scream and Eagle has a red train and a blue train, and I think that the blue train is far superior to the red train. So be sure to ride the blue train if you can. I do think that the front row is worth a shot as well, but if you have time for one ride and you want more airtime, which I know for a lot of you that's the case, I'd recommend the second and back row. You could ride the very back row if you wanted, but it's way rougher than the second and back, so just do the second and back instead. After you ride Scream and Eagle, I think you should head down the hill to the boss. This coaster can get fairly long waits in the afternoon, but the main reason why I think you should hit it early is not because of that, but rather because of the higher chances you have of getting a trimless ride. Usually, there are not that many people that go straight to the boss first thing in the morning, and trimless rides, in my opinion, are the best way to experience this coaster, with the exception of night rides. However, there is one caveat to this. More often than not, the park will not send a train if there are not enough people to ride it, so be aware of that if you go to Six Flags St. Louis. Usually, the minimum rider requirement for the boss to be dispatched is at least 8 people. The boss usually has two trains running throughout the course of a day, but there's something else important to know with this ride. If there are not enough people to ride this coaster early in the day, and there's still at least eight people, the crew of the boss will often fill just one train and send the other train empty with multiple bags of lead to weigh it down. In this case, the ride is running at the capacity of just one train despite having two trains running on the track. The park will usually start loading the second train with guests if the line builds up, mainly when it goes over the bridge above the brake run. In terms of seating, I think the front row is the only row for this coaster. The front row provides a much smoother ride experience, a better sense of speed, and I'd argue that the airtime is better up there. If you decide to ride anywhere between 2 or 12, good luck coming off without a headache. Also, I recommend sitting on the left side of the train. For whatever reason, the left side runs smoother than the right side. One more thing to know with this ride, and that's especially if you're visiting towards the start or end of the season. This coaster has a minimum temperature requirement. The boss will not open until the track reaches temperatures of about 55 degrees, and once it's open, it closes when the track temperature reaches 48 degrees. If you visit during Fright Fest especially, I recommend checking the daily temperature before you visit the park. If the temperature looks like it'll be enough for the boss to open for only a few hours and then close down for the night, I don't think it's a bad idea to hit it before Scream and Eagle. While you're over near the boss, you could get on Rookie Racer, which is the park's newest coaster. As of when I'm recording this, the coaster isn't open yet, so I'm not sure how long this line will actually be when it does open. And since no one else has ridden it yet, I obviously don't know what the best seat for this ride is either. If it is open when you go, and you don't do it after the boss, do it after Pandemonium, which I'll get to in a little bit. Once you've done the boss, and or Rookie Racer, depending on if it's open, and if you got to ride it or not, I think Mr. Free should be your next stop. Depending on which path you take to get there, you might pass the entrance to Pandemonium on the way. If you do pass Pandemonium and that line is short, you could get it right on it if you wanted to because that line does build up. However, I personally use the skip Pandemonium after I ride the boss, and I head straight towards Mr. Freeze. I can totally see why this is the ride that a lot of people start off with. Much like Scream and Eagle, Mr. Freeze is very popular from my experience, and while Scream and Eagle is not included on the skip the line system for members or the flash pass, Mr. Freeze is included. On top of that, Mr. Freeze tends to run one train a lot of the time, which often results in longer lines. Plus, this 
This coaster tends to break down a significant amount, so if this ride is a priority for you, hitting it early is important. Depending on how fast the crew is moving, dispatches on this ride can vary. I usually see a train launch every two to two and a half minutes. As for the best seat, I think the very front and very back are equal in terms of quality on this ride and are both must-dos. The launch feels identical in the front and the back, but the back is better for the trip out. The inverted top hat taken backwards is best experience in the back row, along with the massive spike. While the back may be better for the trip out, the front is way better for the return trip. The sense of speed in the front row on the return trip is insane, and the overbank feels way more intense than before. Plus, I think the positives are stronger up front for this part of the ride. Since they're both equal, I think Mr. Freeze is the one coaster in the park that you absolutely have to ride in the front row and the back row during your visit to get the full experience. After you ride Mr. Freeze, I recommend following the pathway to the right of Justice League. By doing this, you'll eventually find yourself at American Thunder. From my experience, this ride doesn't normally get a huge line unless the park is really busy. American Thunder almost always has two trains running, so you should be able to get on fairly quickly. The dispatches for this ride can be on the slower side times, but sometimes they're really fast. Even if they're slow, they're not the worst I've seen. I personally think the best seat on this coaster depends on which train you get. As of May of 2023, which is when I'm recording this, I think the back row is the best seat if you get the red train, and if you get the blue train, you're going to want to ride up front. The airtime is good in the front of the red train and the back of the blue train as well, but it's better in the seats I just recommended. Hopefully by this point, you'll have done at least four, five, or six of the park's coasters, depending on if you hit Pandemonium and or Rookie Racer on the way to Mr. Freeze. After you ride American Thunder, I recommend tackling the coasters in the back of the park that you did not do before, starting with River King Mine Train. This entrance can be a bit harder to find, but it's right near the giant Bugs Bunny National Park sign, which is a kid's area. I've seen this coaster with decently long lines before, and oftentimes the line is outside the entrance. However, it's usually nowhere near as bad as it may look. More often than not, the line leads straight to the boarding area, and if it's not, it's through only a switchback or two in the queue house. I usually see two trains running on River King Mine Train with fairly quick dispatch times, but I have seen them run one train in the past. If they're running two trains, the line should move fairly quickly. You're going to want to ride in the back row for this coaster. The back row has a couple sudden airtime moments, most notably the spectacular tunnel drop at the end. The front row is much tamer than the back, but it does have some good laterals, but it pales in comparison to the back row on River King Mine Train. Once you've done River King Mine Train, I recommend heading just up the hill to Boomerang. This ride only has one train due to the nature of this coaster, but the situation with this line is very similar to that of American Thunder. The line can be massive if the park is busy, otherwise it's not too bad. I've noticed that this coaster tends to be closed quite a bit as well. Out of all the coasters in the park that are most likely to be closed for the day, Boomerang is the highest on that list. I rarely saw this coaster open in 2019, but it's been running quite consistently ever since 2020. However, that doesn't mean it's not impossible for it to be closed for the day, as I have seen it closed for the day a couple times, ever since 2019. I think the best seat on this ride is a toss-up. I think the front row and the back row are similar in terms of intensity, but I think if you're looking for a smoother ride, which this does have the aero trains after all, so they might be rougher, I recommend sitting in the front because it's quite a bit smoother than that in the back. If you have not done Pandemonium by this point, I recommend doing that next. This coaster might have a longer line by this point, but you probably won't have to wait too long for it. Unlike its Missouri counterpart in Spinning Dragons at Worlds of Fun, which only runs one car on the track at a time, Pandemonium always has multiple cars running on the track at once. In 2020, I waited through almost a full queue, and despite their social distancing measures, it took no more than 15 to 20 minutes thanks to multiple cars running. There isn't really a best seat on this ride since it is a single car, but I recommend distributing your group throughout the cars in a way so that there's more weight on the side that leaves the station facing forwards. By doing this, your car will likely follow the curve of the drop and possibly start spinning early on this ride. That is, if you get a good ride, which from my experience is quite rare, even if it's off balance. After you ride Pandemonium, if you have not done Rookie Racer by this point yet, hit that, and then go down to the front of the park. Assuming you followed this strategy so far, you'll have two coasters left. I recommend riding everybody's favorite, Ninja. Okay, jokes aside, this coaster seems to be universally hated due to how rough everyone says it is, and as a result, Ninja will probably be a walk-on unless the park is slammed. To decrease your chances of getting a bad ride, I highly recommend the front row on this one. The back row does have a good pop of airtime on the first drop, but it was a lot rougher than the front row. My back was sore after riding the very back row on Ninja in June of 2021, but I was honestly expecting a lot worse. I recommend sitting on the right side of the train for this coaster. The reason why is because the left side of the train jerks more in the Sidewinder. The right side of the train is a lot smoother for this element specifically, and the rest of the ride in general. This and the boss are the only two coasters in the park where I feel like the difference between the left and right is so great in terms of smoothness. Last, and certainly not least, we have Batman. The reason why I recommend hitting this coaster last is because the line for it tends to be way shorter later in the day. As someone who was a ride operator at this coaster in the spring of 2021, I noticed that the line for it was really long early in the day, but it was a walk on by the mid to late afternoon. Most people would have made their way to the back of the park by now, so hopefully this line shouldn't be much of an issue. In my opinion, where you sit on this ride depends on what forces you value more. If you want more whip, ride the back row. If you want more positives, I think the front row is better. That being said, you can't go wrong with either of these rows. Assuming everything went according to plan, you would have gotten on all the coaches at Six Flags St. Louis. If you plan to visit this park in 2023, I hope that I was able to help you find a good way to experience the park. Of course, feel free to use a different strategy that was not discussed in this video. I know that a lot of you might want to hit rides like Pandemonium or Mr. Freeze first, and I totally understand that. This is just a strategy that I normally use, and I figured I should share it with you guys. As always, before you click off of this video, please be sure to leave it a like and comment about what you enjoyed about this
this video and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel and like what you saw, be sure to hit the subscribe button. My goal is to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the summer, so I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take when I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well using the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.